Hello guys, and welcome back to the Perfect Timepiece channel. My name is Josh, and this is a little bit of a different video, as you guys may be able to tell. Uh, my buddy Ray sent me this very beautiful uh, SKX173 to review, so I thought that since uh, it's in my possession, I might as well film a comparison. And today we're actually going to be comparing this uh, SKX173 to my Christopher Ward uh, Trident Pro 600. Now, these watches are f in fairly different price categories. This is a $250 diver, while the Christopher Ward down here is about $1,000 new. Uh, one thing, one little caveat to point out before I hop in, this Christopher Ward is a member of the older line of Christopher Wards. Christopher Ward uh, redid their logo. I personally am a fan of this old logo, um, but they do basically sell the exact same watch as this one new on their website, just with the different logo uh, for $910. So let's hop right on into the comparison. Uh, the first category we are going to talk about today is value. Now up first we have the Trident Pro 600 uh, and then we're going to talk about the SKX173. So up first, value. Alright, so this watch comes in at $910, and it does have some nice features that I think warrant the price. Uh, this has a ETA 2824 or Salida 200 movement inside of it, and you don't actually know which one it has until you open it up. Uh, I, I have opened this one up, and it has an ETA 2824, um, but not all of them do. In addition, it has a unidirectional 120-click uh, diving bezel with a ceramic insert, and it has some really nice diving themes to it. It has that trident on the back, back of the second hand there that you can see. Um, and overall, I think it's a pretty nicely designed watch. Um, just a, a quick note, I bought this uh, used with uh, the, the bracelet being brushed the way it is. Um, so I, I did not do that to the watch, um, but I think it looks pretty nice either way. Now, I don't know if you can see this trident on the back here. Camera is having some trouble focusing on it. Um, but basically, it does have some of those really nice diving elements. And uh, because of that, I think, you know, th this watch, if it were $100 or $200 more, it would have to compete with uh, Damasco and Oris and those guys and I think it is just you know it, it, it's almost as good uh, as those watches but I think it's just half a half a step down in terms of quality um, from them so I have to give this a pretty average rating uh, compared to other watches in this price category so in terms of value I'm gonna give the Christopher Ward a 7 out of 10 now, the next watch, obviously, that we're going to talk about is the SKX173. If you guys aren't familiar, this is the American version of the SKX007. Now, this watch has a very, very interesting kind of old-school retro design. You can see the different polishing and, and uh, little engraving here on the bezel. Uh, that makes it really, really interesting to look at. I, I kind of like this look right here. That's my favorite look of the watch. Um, but I do think that given the price uh, of $225, that's, that's pretty low. Um, and I do think you are getting a really good, um, a well-made watch for the money. And I do think that the design is, uh, is pretty good, considering that this watch is a quarter of the price of the Christopher Ward down there. So uh, I do think it's a step above average. You know, if, if this had a sapphire crystal, if this had a hacking and hand-winding movement, um, then I think, you know, it could earn some more points. But I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10 in the value category. 
So up next, we're gonna compare these two watches according to their movement. So up first, we have the Christopher Ward. Now, it's gonna be really hard to see because the second hand is ticking away so quickly, um, but this movement operates at uh, 28,800 hertz, or eight ticks per second, so that, that uh, second hand moves along the dial very, very smoothly. Uh, in addition, this has about a 40 hour power reserve, and it has that date window there at the three o'clock position. So all of those things are driven by the movement. It's very nice and easy to wind with this screw down crown. And uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, I think the movement on this is just a step above the movement on the SKX173. Uh, as I said in the last category, this movement does not hack or hand wind. Uh, and I, I would show you that personally but I do think that it'll take too much time in this video and it's already getting kind of long. Um, so I, I'm gonna give this, I think this movement, considering the price, is, is pretty average uh, for the category. You know, it's in a weird spot. If you paid maybe $100, $150 more, you could get one of the watches in the Sarb line from Seiko, which does hack and hand wind. Uh, but this movement is just the uh, 7S26, so I do think that it is pretty average, and for that reason it'll get a 7 out of 10, while the Christopher Ward back here gets a solid 8 out of 10. Now moving on to the design category, uh, we have to talk about just the, the very intricate details of how this watch was designed and how it all kind of plays together. And I think that this Christopher Ward kind of gets uh, an almost perfect score, 9 out of 10, um, because of the different little design elements on here. That, that light against that sapphire glass looks amazing. Um, but if you look at that trident on the back of the second hand, I know I've already talked about this, uh, that does kind of play into the nautical theme of the watch. The uh, Gilleche, I believe it's called, pattern on the dial, which you can kind of see like right there. Uh, that wave on the dial looks pretty amazing. Also hints to the uh, aquatic nature of this watch. Uh, the unidirectional diving bezel is uh, amazing and very practical um, for this watch. It feels very good. It feels uh, very clicky. That's how I would describe it compared to the SKX back here, uh, which feels very rubbery. This is very solid. Um, I think all of the little elements, the text on both the bezel and the face uh, work well together. Uh, the clasp, you know, is, is very sturdy. It kind of clicks in. So I don't know if you guys heard that, but it clicks in very well. And then we have the Trident logo again at the back here. So pretty nice overall. Uh, I think it's it's almost perfect. You know, it's not quite there, but I do think it earns a nine out of 10. So up next we have the SKX173. Originally, I really did not like the way that this watch was designed, but as I've spent more time with it, I've learned to love uh, both the squared indices, which reminds me a little bit of the Tudor Pelagos, uh, and the really iconic and um, uh, the minute hand that stands out very, very well. I think it's a very iconic um, design. I think it has aged pretty well, and I think it will continue to age well through the years. We have, of course, that um, tsunami, the SKX Tsunami back there. So I do think that this, uh, this watch though is just a little, it, it's a step below the uh, Christopher Ward or like half a step below the Christopher Ward simply because, um, you know, there's no signed crown, there's no, um, the, the dial or the case polishing is not as clean as the Christopher Ward. So I would give this an eight and a half out of 10 in terms of design. 
Now up next we have usability or how usable the watch is in everyday life. Now the Christopher Ward here is is almost perfect again. It gets a nine, a 9 out of 10 in this category. Uh, it has 600 meters of water resistance and I don't know if you're going to be able um, to see that on the dial. Uh, underneath the Trident Pro it has the 600 meters or like 1200 feet or however, however many feet is that? Like 1500 feet? I don't know. I don't know what the conversion is. Um, but that in addition to this really uh, clicky bezel, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear that. Let me bring it up to the microphone. So it's very, very clicky. Feels good. Um, it, I, I got to fix this bezel. Give me a second. All right, guys. So I fixed the bezel. Um, it, it is very usable. I have been swimming with this piece both in uh, a pool and in the ocean, and it, it feels good. Uh, it's very easy to clean out. The, the clasp mechanism is very, very sturdy. And uh, here, I'm totally messing up this... Uh, this clasp here. You can see the clasp is signed by Christopher Ward, if I can get it to focus there. Maybe? Yes? Okay. Um, and it is very sturdy. It has that little signed buckle there with the Christopher Ward logo uh, that matches the signing on the crown, which is all very, very nice. Um, but on ter in terms of how it actually feels on the wrist, uh, this watch feels amazing. The bracelet is pretty comfortable, um, except when you're at a desk and typing, which unfortunately is, is pretty much my job. <laughs> so um, not the best for me, but in terms of walking around, even in the summer, I've found that wearing the metal bracelet is pretty amazing. Uh, this is like my daily beater, uh, something that I wear almost every day. So, uh, and I've owned it for almost a year now, so it is uh, something that I, I love, and I use it, and it just works, and I love that. So, moving on, otherwise this video is going to be millions of years long, we have the Seiko SKX173 here, and in terms of actual usability, I knocked it down uh, just a few points compared to the Christopher Ward back here. And, and the reason is, number one, the bezel feels kind of rubbery. Um, it kind of, it, it is 120 clicks. Let me bring it up to the microphone so you can hear this. It, it feels as if the rubber gaskets inside this watch um, are, are very rubbery, like almost like rubber bands, um, whereas the Christopher Ward was much more uh, solid feeling. And that, that's really the best way that I can describe it. Also, this watch is only 200 meters water resistance. Uh, again, I would feel comfortable showering, going into a pool, uh, or going into the ocean with this piece, so I can't really knock it there. Um, but what I can knock it for is the non-hand winding and non-hacking movement. Uh, which has been kind of a theme through our discussion of this watch. Um, but it, it does get a little bit annoying. Uh, it gets annoying having to reset the piece, uh, or if you, if you want to have it going for a certain period of time, then you have to wear it. Um, I know that when I was getting ready to prepare this watch for this video, I had to wear it when all I really wanted to do was... Uh, wear my vintage Omega, which you guys can see here. Anyway, uh, that's, that's a little bit of a, uh, of a sidetrack. Uh, this crown is a little bit hard to unscrew, as I said, which makes it a little bit all that much harder to actually set the time on this watch. Um, but, and then it also kind of sticks up uh, when you put it on your wrist. Um, it, it is kind of thick, uh, and those lugs do taper downward, um, but it does feel a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, not to mention that this strap here, uh, my wrists are really small, so I have to put it on the 
uh, the tightest little notch there. And when you thread it through, like part of the strap like sticks out and it just doesn't look, look all that great. Um, that being said, you know, it, it does feel very durable. It is, it is pretty heavy. Um, but I do think it is, uh, almost, you know, a, a notch and a half below the, um, Christopher Ward in terms of usability. So, um, the Seiko SKX here, right here, uh, gets a seven and a half while the Christopher Ward gets a nine. So we're on to the last category in our review, and here is the beautiful, wonderful Christopher Ward with a nice light box behind it, <laughs> shining off the glass. Um, in terms of quality, again, I think it's uh, maybe half a step below almost perfect. I think it's an eight and a half out of ten. Um, there, there really isn't much that I think Christopher Ward could have done to make to make this piece uh, better. Maybe um, it, it's hard to tell here, but the second hand uh, is a little bit rough. The the polishing on the second hand is a little bit rough, um, and I do wish that they, you know, maybe made this bracelet just a little bit better, a little bit more comfortable. Uh, when wearing it at a desk, uh, that sort of thing kind of takes away from the watch. Now, obviously, this isn't like Rolex quality or anything like that, uh, so it you know it can't get a perfect score, um, and there there are a few of those little negatives. So I do think that it earns an eight and a half, uh, a proud eight and a half, uh, and I do think that that is a pretty realistic um, and, and fair evaluation of the quality of this piece. Um, so, and, and I think, you know, I, maybe I did a poor job explaining the quality. Uh, if I did, definitely leave a comment down below in the description uh, so I can clarify. But I think when I'm comparing it to the SKX, uh, a lot of those things that make this watch uh, such such a good watch will kind of uh, make themselves apparent. So comparing the bezel of the SKX173 to the Christopher Ward, um, you know, the, the SKX173 just has a uh, painted on bezel with a little loom pip uh, at the top, whereas the Christopher Ward has that same loom pip, uh, but it actually has a ceramic bezel with the, that paint kind of engraved into the actual bezel, uh, which is a nice touch. Uh, in addition, you know, in terms of the movement, I've said already that the Christopher Ward is a step above. Uh, in terms of actually, like, winding the crown, the Christopher Ward has a bigger crown that kind of sticks out a little bit, so it is a lot easier to actually unscrew that crown. Uh, I tried to unscrew the crown of the SKX173 uh, in my review, uh, but it's, it's actually kind of hard, and it takes a lot of time, so I don't want to show you guys that. Um, in addition, you know, the SKX173 comes on this, uh, this rubber strap here. Uh, nothing, nothing wrong with that, and, and I do understand that Seiko did that to cut down on costs, um, but it is nothing compared to this nice uh, tapered bracelet by Christopher Ward. And uh, please ignore the scratches. Uh, as I said, like I use this Christopher Ward on the bracelet every single day. So I think that wraps up our uh, comparison of the Christopher Ward Trident Pro 600 to the SKX173. I know this video was a little bit long and it kind of uh, w was off the cuff uh, for me, but the Christopher Ward in the end scores 83 out of 100 points uh, by just taking a total sum of all the categories, whereas the SKX173 got a 75. So according to those scores, the Christopher Ward is 8% better for four times the cost. And, uh, you know, I'd have to have to kind of agree with that one. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. If I left anything out, let me know. 
Um, but I will see you all next time. Bye.